I'm going to draw with you the three resonance structures for CNO minus. First of all, this is not NCO minus, that is a different ion entirely. The one we are talking about is called fulminate. What really matters though is that it was written CNO for you by your teacher. Okay, so you've got a carbon atom and a nitrogen atom and an oxygen atom in that order. How many valence electrons do you have to deal with here? Carbon is in group 14. And so it brings four valence electrons with it. Nitrogen is in group 15. It brings five valence electrons with it. And oxygen is in group 16. It brings six valence electrons with it. That's four and five and six. And a bonus electron for the minus charge here. That gives you 16 electrons total that you can put into your Lewis structure. Now, the way that I personally draw my Lewis structures is to single bond the central atom to all the outer atoms. Then I fill the octet on my outer atoms. Two, four, like one, two, three, four electrons are already accounted for here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I'm out. That's all the electrons that I'm going to be allowed to use in this structure. Now, this is not a valid Lewis structure. Carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen all obey the octet rule, and so I need a full eight electrons on all the atoms. This one's already satisfied, and this one's already satisfied, but this one is not. He only has one, two, three, four electrons around him. Where are we going to get the extra electrons. Well, we can move them in from the outer atoms. Now the resonance here comes from the fact that you could get those electrons from either carbon or oxygen. So watch this. Let's say that we took both, like let's say we completed the octet on nitrogen both from the carbon atom. That's this electron pair and this electron pair moving in to form a double and triple bond here you'd end up with carbon triple bonded to nitrogen, which itself is single bonded to oxygen still. That oxygen still has its three lone pairs, and this carbon only has one lone pair written. It still has its eight electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But now nitrogen also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. That's a valid Lewis structure once you put it in square brackets with a minus one charge. Cool. Now, uh, people are going to get in my grill about formal charge here. Formal charge is how many electrons each atom has relative to how many it brought. Now this carbon brought four electrons and it currently has one, two all on its own and it's sharing these six. The shared six, we assume that like three belong to the carbon, three belong to the nitrogen. So this carbon actually has one more electron than it originally brought. It has a minus one formal charge here. Nitrogen brought five. And so if it has one, two, three, four in this case, that's actually a plus one formal charge. Oxygen brought six. It has one, two, three, four, five, six on its own plus one from this bond, that's an extra minus one charge. Note that the sum of those formal charges is the total charge here. Whether or not you have to show those depends on your teacher. Let's get to the other resonance structures. What if we took both of the lone pairs from oxygen instead of carbon? Well, then we'd be left with carbon single bonded to nitrogen which itself is triple bonded to the oxygen. This actually looks like almost the exact reverse of this. It's the carbon that keeps all its lone pairs, and it's the oxygen that's relegated to a single lone pair. Don't forget your square brackets with the minus one charge, but what are the formal charges here? Well, oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five electrons that belong to it compared to the six that it brought, it actually lost one. So it has a formal charge of plus one. Nitrogen actually has the same configuration as it did here. It's one extra, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's one fewer electrons than it brought. One, 
two, three, four compared to the five it brought. And carbon only brought four electrons, but in this structure, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to it. That's three extra electrons compared to what it brought. Now, I just want to say the most important Lewis structure or resonance structure is the one that has the negative formal charges on the most electronegative atoms. This is a strong negative formal charge on the least electronegative atom. This is not a strong contributor to the resonance hybrid that this uh, ion makes, but it is a valid resonance structure, so I had to draw it. The third resonance structure here is when you get take one electron pair from the carbon and one from the oxygen. You know, meet me halfway kind of stuff. So the carbon is double bonded to nitrogen, which is double bonded to oxygen. And each of those outer atoms is left with two lone pairs. Oh, that seems much more reasonable, right? They are at least uh, both contributing here. Carbon brought four valence electrons, but here it has one, two, three, four, and then a fifth and sixth from here. That's a formal charge of minus two. Nitrogen is plus one because it brought five, but only has, sorry, it brought five, but only has four here, right? It lost a negative charge, which gives it the positive one formal charge. And the oxygen here doesn't have a formal charge. Oh, that's kind of nice. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons compared to the six it brought. We're good to go. All right, all right, all right. Now, which of these is most important or which one's the strongest contributor? Honestly, I would argue it's this one. You have a negative charge on the most electronegative atom. And all of the others have a stronger negative charge on the least electronegative atom. That doesn't sound like what should be happening here. The last thing I want to do is draw in these resonance arrows. This is how you link these structures together to show that they're all the same. It's just a redistribution of electrons around the ion. Well, I'm kind of sorry that that took seven minutes, but I had to do it that way to explain what I was doing at every point. And there you have it, three, three valid resonance structures for the fulminate ion, including formal charges. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.